You ever just wake up and think to yourself, Man, I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to go on a road trip for two days up in NorCal somewhere and have my company pay for all of my expenses. All my expenses including like gas, food, hotel. That'd be the life, right? Well, you know what? That's what's going to happen today. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go, have my company pay for everything, and I guess how will they even find out? I mean, I'm already working from home. How will they even know that I'm like not at home? So long as I have my laptop and I'm checking my email, they won't even know I'm out. And I worked hard, right? Okay, so I know it's hard to tell whether or not that was sarcastic, but half of that is true. So on today's topic, I'm going to be talking about company traveling. Whether or not environmental engineers have to travel for work, what we do, where we go, and all that stuff. Yes, I do have to go to a different facility. It's located pretty far away from my usual work and well, it's business related. So yeah, they do have to pay for my stuff. I'll be taking time off my normal work hours to drive there. So they will have to pay for my food, my gas, I'll have to pay for my normal working hours. And it's really just like, imagine you are working except well, instead of working on your laptop and your desk, you are driving. And so this is a different facility. I don't know how much I can show you because again, most of my stuff is like top secret. But even so, you're going to see some parts of it, hopefully. I can explain to you like the whole travel part of environmental engineering. Several days later. <laughs> so I'm pretty disappointed. Originally, I wanted to like bring you guys along towards my journey as I'm driving towards my facility up in NorCal. And I was just gonna like ramble along as I was driving and you know show you around, and maybe answer some questions while I'm driving. But everything just happened sort of really fast, so I didn't really have any time to like film while driving or even when I was there at the facility. Like I didn't have time to stop and like film because like the contractors were there, you know, the people up there were like you know sort of rushed. The only time I had to like actually stop was like maybe use the bathroom or eat lunch or something. And you wouldn't want to see like just me vlogging my lunch or something like that, so. I didn't film anything. So right now I'm already finished with what I have to do up there. I'm back at home. You're not going to see any pictures or anything like that. So you're just going to have to trust me that I went up there. But in the meantime, I can still answer some questions. And the main topic today is really traveling as an environmental engineer. Yeah, so sorry you don't have anything exciting to look at or to look forward to besides just me answering some questions. So first things first. Why do I have to travel? Like why do we travel at all? Now, it really all depends on like your job position, maybe your company. But for me, I have different sites to visit. So for my job, I have three different facilities. I have one that's located, or no, I have two that's located in Southern California. That's my main, like, typical work day where I used to go to. And we have one up in NorCal. So two in Southern California and like one that's like 400 miles away up in NorCal. So we manage three facilities. So I'm technically responsible for all three facilities. So even though I'm in close proximity to these two, I still can't let that one up in NorCal just like let them do their own thing. I still have to make sure that they're following what we you know, set in place for them. So that's one reason why we travel, because we have different facilities to visit. And the urgency could be that, you know, sometimes they request some things, so we'll have to visit them, or maybe an inspector shows up for that facility, so we have to make sure that we're there to greet the inspector, or Sometimes we get to travel because we have to complete some sort of annual training. And again, this will depend a lot on your company and who you work for. And I'll get into more of that later on in the video. But for the most part, two reasons. Because you have different facilities or because you have to train somewhere. The next question is, how often do I travel? So this varies a lot. And again, this depends on your company. Sometimes it could be like a few weeks, like again, because I have two facilities in Southern California and one in Upper NorCal, it all depends on how often they sort of ask for you. So for my two facilities down here, they're pretty close to each other, maybe like 20 miles away. So I might just visit them every once a week, once a month, just because it's so close to them. But the one in Upper NorCal, I might visit them maybe once every three months, once every six months, or maybe once a year, depending on like the compliance side. So it really all depends on the rules and who visits. So it could vary from weeks to months to maybe even once a year. And sometimes for the training, sometimes they're like renewed every once a year or it could be once every three years. So it all depends. So I don't know if you like traveling or not. I actually don't like to travel too much. You know, once every few months or so, like that's a good enough pace for me. It's a good change of scenery. 
I'm not like traveling every single week or so. It's not like I'm getting called at like two in the morning saying, hey, you gotta visit someone like tomorrow. Uh, it's not like that. So there's a good balance of how much I travel and how much I don't have to travel. The next question is, do I travel only for business? So sort of some of these questions are like sort of similar to each other. You might hear some like similar answers, but yes, basically you travel just for business related stuff or like, I don't know if training is considered business or not, but yeah, so I mean, I got a call from the people up in NorCal saying that, hey, we need to get rid of our hazardous waste. Can you come up here and you know, show us the ropes? Or can you like show us what we have to do? And so even though I went like that day, this was planned for like a few weeks. So I knew beforehand that I had to go eventually, once every three, six months, or maybe once a year. And you know, I planned that out Traveling took through the whole work day, but again, we knew that we were traveling. Like, this is pre-planned. So it would take one whole day to drive up there, like a few hours to get the work done, and then like the rest of the day would be to go back home. So in total, that was like two days worth of travel, business-related stuff. Now, sometimes we have to do training too, so we get to travel for our training. Although sometimes, you know, people can't take advantage of this because training is sometimes or at least right now, it's, it's all online. But before all this whole pandemic, we had the ability to travel to do like our basic HAZWOPER training. So typically that's like a week-long training that maybe you could do online, but because we have the funds, we can go in person in like a classroom setting to pretty much anywhere that's like convenient, whether it's like local or sometimes out of state. So again, you can sort of see where people might take advantage of this because you have to travel for free pretty much. And it's all like business expense, paid for by the company. So I'm gonna give you like a specific example. So here's what I did. For the 40 hour Haswopper, that is just like a training that you have to do for at least my job. It's like a week long training, you know, five whole straight days. Now you can take this online and it might cost like, I don't know, a few hundreds, or you can travel out of state, in state, or travel anywhere pretty much to take this class in person. So either online, maybe a few hundreds, or like in class in person, pay for the hotel, pay for the airplane, pay for the class and rack up like a thousand dollars. So either a hundred or maybe a thousand. But because we had the funds, like my manager, he suggested, hey, you know, just, just travel. Just travel far, still in state, but like, you know, we'll pay for the hotel, we'll pay for the airplane, we'll pay for your meals. Just travel and have fun. So again, this all depends on your company and whether or not your company's cool or your manager's cool. Sometimes they might say, you know, just choose the cheapest option you have. You can't travel anywhere, just take the, training online so you can just stay here, save money, you don't have to pay for your expenses. But again, so for me, I spent like over a thousand just on the hotel and the class to travel like what could have been online. And all this traveling and training and stuff, this brings you to the next topic. How much money do you get when you travel? Like who pays for it? How do they pay for it? Like do they even have enough for it? And will your company like pay for all your stuff? Even if you're having fun, like people know that you're gonna travel and like take advantage of it and have fun. You know, you're not gonna spend money on like McDonald's, but you could probably spend money on like steakhouse, you know? So again, I'm, I feel like I'm answering the same things. It all depends on your company, like whether or not they have the money and whether or not they really like allow people to travel or maybe they trust you to make the right purchases. If your company makes you go to a different facility, then like they have to pay for your gas or your mileage or whatever. So that's a obligation. They have to do it. They're required to, in order to like have you, you know, still have your job and like for them to still comply with whatever state regulations or something like that. You know, it's still part of the job. So you have to do it. But you know, this is where the gray area comes in, where they might say you have to do it, but you gotta do it very cheaply. You know, make smart purchases. Whether it's like training or business, you, you can only eat McDonald's. You can only stay in the cheapest motel, or maybe for training, you can only do it online. So it all depends on like how your company's budgeting. For my job, we have a lot for the traveling and training budget. So that's why like my boss, he says, you know, go, go lavish on your traveling because we have a lot in it. Why we have so much money in our traveling? I don't know why. Again, it's good for us because we get to travel. It's fun. I can enjoy myself. Yeah, so the amount of spending that you can like spend per trip varies depending on your company how far away it is. Mine just happens to be like pretty good. So, I mean, I feel like I'm showing off. <laughs> don't, don't think that every single environmental engineering job will let you do this because 
most likely it won't. Don't get your hopes up because you're probably not going to have the same like uh, opportunities as me. I don't want to sugarcoat this thing that you know I travel, I sleep in a five star hotel and I eat steakhouse every single meal. That's not the case because I still have a limit on how much I can spend too. And for the most part you don't really have time to like do all this. Even though they give me a lot of money, you don't really have time or like you sort of have to go out of your way to spend all that money. As I was driving towards like NorCal, like the restaurants there, they're all like McDonald's and fast food. So like even if I had like a thousand dollars to spend, you can't spend a thousand dollars with McDonald's and like eat it all by yourself, you know? Alright, so I hope this answers some of your traveling questions. I hope this doesn't like, you know, make you want to do this job just because you get to travel. Some jobs will let you, some jobs won't. So again, it all depends on your company. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.